and Jay Shea. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry, everyone. I'm running a little late. Uh, there's a backup uh, in the bike lane. I swear they should never let hoverboards in there. It's awful. Um, uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, uh, as the sign says, this is the Lab for Physics 301, Multiverse Concepts. Uh, if you're looking for the Web Bubble Practicum, uh, you are in fact on the wrong side of campus. Uh, so if you leave now, you'll get there in no time. <laughs> okay, uh, rough start. Um, my name is Aaron. Uh, I'm a grad student here at UC Duomps. Uh, I'll be administering the lab uh, on behalf of Professor Duesberg. Um, now today's lab, uh, I'm actually really excited about it, uh, we'll be talking about um, the uh, Project Orpheus from back in the 2030s. Uh, probably you're not very familiar with it, it's not very well known. Uh, it was uh, the Earth's first and only uh, manned mission exploring alternate universes, uh, consisting of two missions, uh, the second of which uh, famously never returned under mysterious circumstances. Um, <laughs> yes, very funny. <laughs> This is a very exciting day because uh, uh, all of the project's documents uh, just got completely and utterly declassified. I'm very excited uh, to go through some of the documents today. Um, some of you in uh, Brain Augmentation 612, anybody taking Brain Augmentation 612? Yes, uh, you may recognize the device I have on my head. Uh, it may look like a floppy hat, but it is in fact a psionic identity archival projection or SIAP device. Uh, this will allow me to take the documents from uh, my neurochip, which we all have, um, and uh, project the experiences of the people who created those documents, embodying them and kind of becoming them for a brief period of time. Uh, not only that, but it comes in herringbone, houndstooth, <laughs> and Scottish heart. <laughs> Very fashionable. Um, so since there were so many documents uh, to go through, uh, I've just set the SIAP device on a shuffle. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I have no idea exactly what it's going to bring up, but uh, it should be really fun. All right, um, stylus is at the ready. There will be a quiz at the end, so make sure that you take notes. All right. Um, OK, here we go. SIAP. Engage. <laughs> when humanity first discovered a way to peek through the curtain of reality and explore other worlds, other Earths, their sole emissary was a lone physicist who famously said when peering and looking into the wonders that she saw, they should have sent a poet. <laughs> and as of today, they have. This is Captain Redacted. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a documentation of my findings. Well, maybe this year will be the year the dragons finally awaken and gather their scattered bones From the museums where they were forsaken And the march with the zombies and the werewolves and the vampires And the monsters that want to undo us To make war with the aliens and the mad scientists And the monsters that want to control us But then maybe in the midst of it all You were waiting for some girl to call and constructive use for all of their hate. <laughs> Guess what I'm trying to say is maybe this year we'll get our priorities straight. <laughs> It's another extinction, and death makes no distinction between the bad and the good. So we laugh and we dance and we meet all the people we never knew lived in our neighborhoods. But then maybe in the nick of time, the asteroids turn away on a dime. Even Neil deGrasse Tyson is shaken to the very core. <laughs> Guess what I'm trying to say is maybe this year we'll get out a little bit more.
you down. Well, maybe this year will be the year we shake off all of our debt and the unicorns come to our rescue and we start bringing all of our million dollar bets of us. Maybe today is the day the rents a room and signs a lease for the year. Or else maybe today all the oil dries up and we find that there was nothing to fear. But if you want to know what I think, I think I need another dream. Redacted himself, the famous second lost mission. Oh my god. We might actually find out. We might solve the mystery of what happened to him. We might actually hear his last words. Whew, this is big. Oh, there's some later arrivals. Uh, you missed some crucial information from earlier in the lab, but uh, you'll figure it out. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> it's the future. We'll figure it out. Uh, <laughs> I know I should probably send this information on to the, to the department chair or maybe the local news aggregate bot, but maybe we could just take a little closer look. Yeah? Should we, should we go a little deeper? Find out? Okay, okay. You guys are accomplices now. <laughs> Alright. Sayap. Engage! <laughs> you are ghosts. You're a ghost. You're a ghost. You're a ghost. You're all ghosts. And you are stuck haunting the car that you died in. See, when the end of the world finally came, when the walls fell, you were among those piled into station wagons, pickup trucks, seeking the freedom and the safety of the open road. What you found instead was the biggest traffic jam in human history. <laughs> the biggest and the last. When Death finally came. It was fast and it was sudden. You don't remember exactly what happened, but it left you here, alone, in the middle of nowhere. You hear faint stirrings from cars nearby, other ghosts, but for some reason, you can't speak to them. The worst thing about it is that you have this thing inside of you, this story. Your story, the story that only you can tell. It's stuck inside of you, it needs to come out, it needs to be heard by living ears. But for miles and miles, there's no one. And so you wait, and days become weeks and months, and who knows how long time passes until one day off in the distance you see, you see a cloud of dust. You see a lone rider crossing the lanes. You think, this could be it. This could be my chance. But as the rider approaches, you see their set, determined face. You see the speed that their mechanical horse is riding. And you know that they will stop for nothing and for no one. Still, you cry out to them. Please don't leave me. Please don't leave me, please don't leave me behind, please, with me. Please don't leave me, please don't leave me, please don't leave me, please don't leave me behind.
when I pass through that gate. Only bad news and a troubled mind awaits. Wait, I'm so never knowing. You weigh me down just like a stone. If your eyes were with me, I could never make it alone. I am writing home. I am writing home. To the bad news and to you. I am writing home. I am writing home. My only home is you. Go sing with me. Please don't leave. Please don't leave. Please don't leave. Leave me Sing. Swallowing its prey whole. 
now there are no masters left. We have outlived them. We are descended from their servants who fled to the hills before the hungry seas could take them. And we stomp our feet to the rhythm of the waves. summa cum laude from this university with a double major in quantum physics and astro poetry? <laughs> his thesis project, oh, his thesis project. He, not only did he link gravitation waves to his string theory, but he also used the vibrations of some atomic strings to make a musical composition for a performance <laughs> art piece uh, about the three-body problem uh, using just a case of duct tape and Japanese rope bondage. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. It's really cool. I can't, I can't, I can't wait to see what's next in here. All right. Saya, engage. <laughs> In this world, we see a city divided by a set of train tracks. On one side, the neighborhoods are quaint, well-organized, the homes stately. On the other side of the tracks, the streets careen wildly between half-finished buildings that will be torn down and replaced by other buildings that will only ever be incomplete. In this world, memory can be stored in three-dimensional objects. The smell of an old book, the feel of an old blanket, the songs on an old record. These things can bring back memories with perfect and utter realness. On the stately side of the tracks, people have dedicated themselves to creating whole libraries of memory, keeping every keepsake, living lives full of histories. These people get on well with their relations and never move far from the family home. But sometimes, sometimes they wonder. They wonder why they're not the ones on an adventure. Why they're not the ones sending postcards from faraway places. It's the only way they see the world outside. They wonder this. All the while, they polish each keepsake one by one by one. On the other side, on the chaotic side, people have dedicated themselves to only holding on to a handful of memories. A necktie, a hairbrush, only that which can fit inside a suitcase, perhaps even the suitcase itself. These people live lives full of uncertainty and drama, and sometimes they too wonder. They wonder why they didn't keep the color of their first lover's hair, or the song that their father used to use to sing them to sleep. Some say you can have it both ways, to live on both sides of the tracks. Such people, if they can be said to really exist, must flicker like old light bulbs, neither living for memories nor in them. And if you're very lucky, you might very well become one of them. One, two, three, four! When we were young, the world was no bigger than the footprints that we made.
to the streets you once walked in with walking to the good things that you've earned but maybe nothing will look the same maybe this ain't the place you came from the nothing torn down you left your hometown Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Collider Comedy Club. My name is Larry Beryllium, and I'll be your host for this evening of hilarity. So I hope you have your phasers set to chuckle. <laughs> Alright, so, Neutron walks into a bar and says, Hey, bartender, how much for a drink? Bartender says, for you, no charge. <laughs> then, then, uh, okay, then, a neon walks into the bar. And the bartender says, hey, we don't so serve noble gases in here. Get out of here. Neon doesn't react. Hey. <laughs> See, Neon feels too overwhelmed by the stigma of the experience to respond. The Neutron, however, coming from a position of privilege, calls out the bartender for prejudicial practices, but was quick to check in with the Neon to make sure that they weren't unintentionally co-opting their struggle. Then this random proton throws a punch, and this kicks off a riot, and then two years later, the landmark civil rights case, Neon versus Feynman, sets the precedent that any discrimination against any element is unconstitutional. <laughs> That's crap. That's crap. Uh, you, sir, you seem like you're from another dimension. What's your name? Andy. Andy? All right, stop me if you've heard this one before. What do you call a universe where atomic structures are sentient and possess memory from their recent hosts? No, no. Well, let me sing to you about it. <laughs> when glasses shatter, shattered is how it will remain. And a manuscript once burnt will never be read again. But that's just one perspective. The dirt we become is just another gateway to a thousand future destinations. From matter to matter, from energy to energy, pieces of us persist after we cease to exist. From matter to matter, from energy to energy. Hey, hey, hey. 
oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen with me. Oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen. Oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen. One more. Oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen. Just in case. I haven't made myself clear I still miss you You're still here cracks and rocks, guided by the light at the end of the world. We stifle our laughter, as if someone were watching, as if someone even began to care that we were there. We sit down on the dry ground and dangle our feet off at the edge, the line of both the earth and the sky that falls away into true and unrelenting nothingness. It is not like night. It is the end of night. There's a light at the end of the world, far away at a distance beyond knowing. Hardly larger than a star, it cannot cast much light. But maybe, maybe what we see when we look into that light is the world that was once right here. Maybe they are looking right back at us, dangling their own feet off of their edge of their own forever. I'm trying to think of the right thing to say, but never quite finding it. A cold wind blows in from the emptiness we huddle closer to one another, sharing our small warmth. Good night, stranger. The night is creaking neath our feet. Good night, stranger. Our last dance has skipped a beat. You're a lovely fire to dance beside, but now it's time. To run and hide, call your taxi, pay me no mind. Good night, stranger. The childish things have all been done. Good night, stranger. Another year has fallen around the sun. The lovely things have all been spent, and now it's time to pay my rent, but I'm not ready. You're not willing. And if you really wanted me, you could really take me. You could really take me to the end, to the end of the world, where there is a light. And if you really wanted me, you could really take me. Instead, good night.
you feel it? I can feel it. We're getting close. We're getting close to solving the mystery. One of the more common theories going around the Neuronet is that um, uh, while Captain Redacted was going in to the portal, something else was coming back out. And the government totally shut down and quarantined the place. Mm. Uh, the History Channel actually made a direct-to-brain movie out of this. Uh, I don't know if you saw it. Uh, it was awful. It was... Like, seriously, I could have made a better replica of the copy device using aluminum foil. It was, it's just sloppy. The thing is, like, nobody really talks about this mission anymore. It was so important. At least to some of us. Um, well... I think we're close to discovering the mystery, the solution. All right. Sayak, engage. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this, the first annual convention of the world's remaining psychologists after the great crystal ships appeared in our skies and left destruction and horror in their wake, leveling all of our cities and scattering all of humanity across the planet. Uh, CWRP, for sure. <laughs> can, can we get a, a, a round of golf claps for the post-apocalyptic Hilton for hosting us this year? Yes, yes, they've been very generous. I do try the continental breakfast, it is delicious. Um, I'd like to begin our proceedings uh, by uh, discussing the recent outbreak of transhumanism amongst uh, veterans. Uh, as many of you may recall, after the initial devastation brought on by the uh, alien invaders, as we call them, uh, uh, there was a guerrilla faction that started scoring some key victories against our invaders, led by a mysterious woman known only as the Mechanic. The intriguing thing about her uh, faction of soldiers, aside from their rabid loyalty to her, was their policy of replacing various limbs and organs, perfectly healthy ones at that, with superpowered prosthetics of the mechanic's own ingenious design. Now that the war is over and the mechanic has mysteriously vanished, we are left to care for those who remain. And amongst our veterans, we see a new anxiety disorder uh, begin to take hold, one that bears many similarities to PTSD and body dysmorphia, uh, the key symptom to this disorder is an unshakable fear that the patient is somehow not a whole person. What's more, they feel that their organic flesh, not their prosthetics, are the part of them that are out of place. Some patients have even gone so far as to take action on those beliefs. We are working on a treatment technique and have made some very promising uh, progress. Uh, feel free to consult me for details uh, during the cocktail hour in the ruined courtyard out back. <laughs> uh, at the moment, I'd like to share with you the testimony of a particular patient. I believe you will find it uh, quite revelatory. Yes, good.
I wake up to news An understatement to call it grim and every morning I feel farther away Every part of me has a phantom limb When you wake up and draw back the curtains See the freshly disturbed ground Where we buried our former selves By the shores of Puget Sound Dangers abound that can only be found by sailing across her blue waters. White squalls and their like have been well known to strike earnest fear into seafaring hearts. Jules Verne and Poe, with their pens, had a go at describing the foul maelstrom's arts. But these old ocean tales of whirlpools and gales, they fall 20,000 leagues short. When set face to face, against stories from space that our brave starbound sailors report. White squalls have a sister when stars pop and blister and a solar storm shoots through the void. Those invisible flames will rip, fry, and maim any vessel in its reach deployed. And the maelstrom has a brother. Gravity is their mother. Heaven help you if you fall in its path, for no mortal help comes if your vessel succumbs to the murky black hole's wicked wrath. So all you sailors salute your brave brethren's pursuit of the world's far beyond earthly sight. Please pray that they are far from a violent star and safe from the graveyard of light. That's the point of no escape, the point of no return. I'm idling in space, to where a star once used to burn. And nobody will come for me, they'll never hear my cry. No sound, no light escapes, this place there's nowhere left to fly. I'm the first, I'm the first, I'm the first. Sailor across the horizon line, but I'm first, I'm first, I'm first. And no one will know that, so lonesome man of honor is mine. My father was a tailor, my mother was a queen. And I'm a starborn sailor, this whole galaxy I've seen. And I don't regret a lot yet that I've traveled since my birth. And my feet will cross the threshold that they never know the earth. I'm the first, I'm the first, I'm the first. Sailor across the horizon line, but I'm cursed, I'm cursed, I'm cursed. That no one will know that so lonesome man honor is mine. Cradled in the tendrils of a singularity, eternal as that hunger which is my delivery. For even time cannot escape the darkness that is embraced. So eternity have I to dream of my true lover's face. I'm the first, I'm the first, I'm the first Sailor across the horizon line But I'm first, I'm first, I'm first And no one will know that So lonesome man, honor is mine No one will know that So lonesome man, honor is mine Weird. There's, there's only one file left. 
based on the numbering system, there should be dozens more. I must have gotten lost in a file transfer. I mean, these, these are 50 years old. It means there's some Earth that I guess we'll just never know about. I've been obsessed with uh, this project for so long, and its incompleteness, its mystery. Part of me kind of wants it to stay that way. I think that's the poet inside me, if there is one. The scientist in me know. It knows. It's always better to know. Engage. <laughs> it's cold outside. It's cold everywhere now. The world is quiet as the snow falls and falls and falls. It's that moment when you first wake up and there's been a tremendous snowfall. That hour before everyone leaves the house and goes about their day anyway. When the world seems actually still. It's like that all over the world now. Trains have stopped running. The planes no longer fly overhead. The turbines and all the world's dams have ceased their relentless spinning. For the first time in centuries, the earth is breathing a long, tired sigh that will last 10,000 years. This is where I am. This is the last report I'll be able to send. The quantum tether has malfunctioned, and there is no way for me to return to Earth of Origin. But the copy device is still functional. The portal is still open. I can climb in, adjust the controls, and, and I can keep going. And I will. And I must. And when I stand in the valleys that were once city streets, and I sing, the echoes return to me. And it's like I'm no longer alone.
for indulging me. Uh, I guess, um, I guess we know uh, what happened now. No uh, conspiracy or anything. He's just gone. He might still be out there, 50 years later, exploring other Earths. Might be, might even be in this room, in, in this very spot. At the same time, farther away than the farthest galaxy. Oh, uh, looks like uh, that's all the time we have for today. Um, please take your quizzes on the way out. Uh, just fill them out at home and then send them to me. Uh, I'm very serious about that. Uh, Duesberg is going to have my butt if I don't. Um, oh, and uh, Monday is your Theory of Everything presentation. <laughs> if you haven't started yet, it is called the Theory of Everything, so it's probably too late. So just try to have a good weekend. <laughs> all right. Class dismissed.